All right, thank you. You can be seated and uh, appreciate you coming. Let me give you an update what's fixing to happen. Uh, I'm going to get into the message tonight. In a little while, I will look up to the clock to see how long I've been. Uh, in it. Oh, it's already started. See, it started. Look at the clock. Y'all look at the clock. It does this every time change, about this time, every, every time. See, the clock's going crazy. Um, it will probably stop if, if it does not what it normally does. It'll stop at 4 o'clock. Uh, it will freeze at 4 o'clock until sometime, who knows when. Sometime it, it, it straightens itself out. It's called what, what's, what's called an atomic clock. You don't have to set it. It reacts to a, uh, a signal sent out, they say, from Denver. Uh, at least that's what the box said when I bought it some years back. But uh, it's, it's, uh, it's moving right now, and uh, so I've got to talk fast to get the service done before it's time. No, -uh, I don't have to. It's fixing stop at 4 o'clock. I can go all night until it gets to the normal stopping time. Oh, about 7.30, 7.45, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, whenever we wind down. But uh, it's, it's kind of funny that it's going now and I'm talking about it. But uh, it, it's, uh, it's uh, how it works on the time change. So we never know when we're going to get done. Uh, I, I honestly, uh, I, this has been a, a busy, busy week for us. Uh, with the wedding, with other things even leading up to the wedding, uh, the girls coming home. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, this morning uh, and, and the events of this morning may have taken a little toll on me. Uh, on, uh, so I am worn out. And uh, as you can imagine, uh, I understand that we're tired. We lost an hour sleep. We're going to uh, try to be as brief, sorry, Miss Gloria, as possible uh, tonight. Uh, and and hopefully it didn't it didn't stop at four, did it? See, it might go. It might it might shut me down early. Bro. Brother George's watching it. He's waiting. As soon as he gets time for service shut down, he's gonna holler at me. It's time to go home. And uh, <laughs> okay, we're good. I'm still on the good side. It stopped at six oh five. So uh, what time is it? What time is it? Seven thirty. Man, I, oh, good. Now I got to at least uh, at least 7.45, so at 6 o'clock, 6.04, I should be good for a while. And uh, it, it strains itself out. I've been, in the past, I've gone up, tried to fool with it. Uh, nothing I can do about it. It will, it will straighten itself out sometime middle of the night, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but uh, but it's, it's interesting. This is time change uh, Sunday, we call it. Uh, I think it's a ripoff. I think whoever came up with this idea to turn the clock back forward, uh, they need to be shot between the eyes. I'm with most of you. And it's uh, what's really a crime about it is they did it on Sunday. Uh, and so it, uh, it messes up Sunday. And what day to mess up the Lord's Day? Don't fool with the Lord's Day. Leave it alone. Uh, I, I think if they're going to rip an hour off of us, they should take it away from Monday. That's a work day. Uh, and leave Sunday the church day alone. God's day needs to be left alone, but that's just me lobbying. Uh, and one of these days I'll be up in Congress arguing this point, and uh, we'll see if anything ever gets done about it. Uh, but on in honor, if you will, uh, of uh, the day uh, of today and what it is, time change, take your Bibles and turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Uh, the way the Bible's laid out, most of us, about the center of our Bible, if you just flop your Bible open, most of the time they fall open by Psalms. We usually can find Psalms. It's the biggest book in the Bible, uh, so it's easy to find. If you'll go through Psalms to the end of it, you'll run into Proverbs. You go through Proverbs to the end of Proverbs, you will run into Ecclesiastes. Uh, it, it, the title in my Bible says Ecclesiastes or the Preacher. This is uh, a book, and I like to give little background of, uh, of this book for sure. Ecclesiastes is written by King Solomon. Uh, it's, uh, it's written at the end of his life uh, and uh, it's uh, an accounting, if you will, or he's looking back as an old man uh, to much of his life, which was spent, if you read about him and his life, was spent partying, uh, kind of a frivolous way of, uh, of living, uh, and he liked to, uh, to live life on the edge. And he goes through the book of Ecclesiastes bemoaning the fact that he chose that for a lifestyle. Uh, the Bible tells us that he had uh, uh, three, let's see, he had seven, I think I'm saying it right, 700 wives and 300 concubines. Uh, 
that should explain, that's a good description of a mentally challenged individual. Uh, and uh, so, so to put yourself under that kind of derision and duress uh, is just ludic ludicrous in our minds. He apparently had the money to fund such an event or such behavior. Uh, and, uh, and I don't know how he, he dealt with the other end of it. There's a financial side, but there's also an emotional side. Uh, but, uh, but he's writing this, and he's kind of going through the book of Ecclesiastes. As you read it, uh, you get the inclination that's the old man talking, reminiscing, trying to encourage younger people not to follow his footsteps because all of it was vanity. And he lays out for us much wisdom in the, the book of Ecclesiastes, much like Proverbs. Proverbs is kind of a synopsis, kind of a, a daddy teaching his son uh, how to live life. Uh, and uh, what he should do gives brilliant uh, uh, ideas and brilliant uh, tidbits of wisdom to his son in the book of Proverbs. Problem is, he didn't follow him himself. And as a result of that, Rehoboam later is uh, because he's following daddy's footsteps and living a frivolous, frivolous life. Uh, he, uh, he ends up losing the kingdom, in essence, and uh, causing a, a, a declination or declining of the nation of Israel, certainly in, in, uh, in the eyes of God, uh, and, uh, and then those communities around them and what should have been and was given to Solomon was, if you will, an empire of its day. Uh, Israel was on the verge of becoming a, a mighty empire. Uh, Solomon, because of his misbehavior and, uh, and passing that on to his son, it really cost the nation of Israel any power prestige or anything, and they're just one of the smaller nations in our world today. Uh, but here you have wisdom of an old man looking back over a life that he knew better and didn't behave like he should. How many of us fit in that category? And, uh, and so he's going back through his life, and he's reliving and recounting some things. Here in uh, Proverbs chapter 3, uh, first verse, we're going to read uh, a few of these verses and see what Solomon's take on life or a synopsis, he's giving an introduction to his book and he's saying, okay, here it is. And so uh, listen as he goes in verse one, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love, a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time, and he hath set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Years ago in college, a preacher got up and he explained, he didn't have, he said, I don't have any text for the thought. He said, I had a thought, God gave it to me. He said, uh, I, I, and, 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 and it's a great thought, but I didn't have a text for it. And he said he found a text that works all the time. And uh, he read that uh, passage to us, and then he preached whatever the message was. And he said, God said there's a time for everything. There's a time for this message. Here it is. And he gave us that message with kind of interesting use of that, uh, that passage of Scripture. Uh, but I want to I just speak for a few moments on a concept I've thought of long, long Time ago, I thought of this. I've never formulated or, or put it together as a message. Uh, it's lurking in my, my head somewhere. I hope I can make sense of what I'm fixing to say. Uh, and I hope it makes sense to you and hopefully maybe in some way helps you uh, in, in, uh, in your life, in your way and, and perspective maybe uh, in this thing called time. I, I entitled this Time, Our Best Friend and Our Worst Enemy. Uh, time is our best friend and our worst enemy. What do you mean, Brother Dusty, by saying that time is my best friend and my worst enemy? Because time is a synopsis. It's something we measure. Understand this, and this is something hum and our human bodies will never understand. But I'm going to say it because the Bible teaches this. God is not limited by time. We are. 
God doesn't think in time we do. Uh, God is not segmented like we are. He's not segmented by uh, 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 years and months and, and days, weeks, uh, uh, hours, minutes. God's not limited like we are. He's, he's everlasting. He's eternal. Uh, and, and he knows that. Now, we are eternal beings, but we don't even think that way. Uh, if the Bible didn't tell us that, we would have innately, I think we would have this suspicion that we were, but without that clarity uh, that the Bible gives, we wouldn't really grasp that concept. But God truly is eternal, and so time isn't a limit on him, but time is a limit on us. Uh, sometimes that time, and I, I've illustrated this before, my uh, Sammy got married some years back. Uh, I said the last week of time that I had with him, man, I was, as a dad, I was, I was going through my mind. Uh, I need to say, you could, you could ask Laura, she'll tell you. Uh, I, I'd, be, I'd be laying in the bed, fixing to go to sleep, and, and say, oh, man, I got I to gotta talk to Sam about this. And <laughs> she told me, you probably should leave Sam alone. Uh, he got enough stress on his plate trying to get everything in order. But it's, as a dad, I just, I just felt he needed this stuff. He needed to know this stuff. And, and, and ultimately, our time is, limits us. And, and, and if, have you ever done something really dumb? I know none of you ever have, but I've done some things that are really, really dumb. And initially, when I do it, I can't forgive myself because I've done something really, really dumb. And, and it's, it's, it's just, it, it just permeates my mind. Well, what, what I've learned as I've lived, uh, what happens is... As things get in the rearview mirror and get further away from us, it's easier for me to process. It's easier for me to operate. It's easier to, for me to uh, function. Things happen to us in life, and, and since we are limited by time, uh, we, we y'all, do you know if you're not like me, but it, when I take time off and we go on vacation, my wife gets irritated at me because she has a hard time getting me away to go on vacation. I don't really like changing up my world, I, I, and, and I like it just to stay in the rut. And a big part of the reason I don't like it to change is because I know when it changes for a vacation, it's going to change back. And when it changes back, it, it short circuits my head. I'll be short circuited the first day or so I'm on vacation. And then I'll get used to being on vacation and not to, having to worry about this or that, and just kind of uh, relaxing and breathing. Uh, uh, but in the back of my mind, part of the reason I don't like vacations because the whole time I'm on vacation, my brain thinks about when this vacation ends. Because I know I'm going to be behind. I'm going to have to run behind the eight ball and try to get everything done uh, for the next thing. And, and in my life, as weird as it sounds, uh, from Sunday to Sunday is a relatively short period of time. Uh, and, and then you throw in a Wednesday there. So now I've got to come up with stuff to say on Sunday. I've got to come up with stuff to say on Wednesday. Uh, and, and just about the time I think I've caught up, then Sunday's fixing to be here. And I got to put something together. And I'm talking to people who've been in church for a long time. And so my thought is, well, how am I going to come up with something new? And I really can't come up with something new. God already wrote it all down. And so I have to come up uh, with something that God's given me that's intriguing enough to you so that you'll pay attention to me uh, and, and, and listen. And, uh, and I'm not totally wasting my time. So my life exists in, in small segments as all of ours does. But the reality is that time is one of our best friends. When we have a pain, a hurt in our lives, you know, time helps heal those wounds. And in time, though you're dealing with it, uh, a, a hardship, as time goes on, that hardship becomes more bearable. It probably isn't any more bearable than it was, but it feels different. Uh, and internally, we can bear it more so uh, as time progresses. Illustration, my sister passed away, I think, uh, three, three and a half years ago. Uh, and, and when she passed, leading up to her passing was inevitable that she was going to pass. It hit me hard like a ton of bricks. Uh, she's 18 months older than I. Uh, people in my mind that young aren't supposed to pass. Uh, she had just, her grandson had just been born just a few weeks before uh, and just was a couple, three months old, I guess, when she, when she passed. And just, just a, a lot of things hit me like a ton of bricks. It bothered me. 
Uh, and, and if we went back in time and replayed messages that I preached during that time, I was probably suffering internally more than many know. And if I went back, I'd, yeah, yeah, he's pretty bummed there and, and struggling with that. Now, from time to time, I think of my sister. And from time to time, as I do, it bothers me. Uh, but it doesn't bother me to the degree that it bothered me when it initially happened because time has, has allowed a distance to come. And, and the con concept that I'll get to see her again is reassuring me. And, and, and so as time progresses, uh, the dealing with the hardship gets better. <clears throat> so I want to just talk about time for just a little bit. I want to encourage us as we think about time. Let, let me just say this. I used to think I had a lot of time. But as I've gotten older, I don't have much time. Man, what we witnessed this morning, man, we thought Brother Marvin, he's going to be uh, around forever. In fact, I was talking to Brother, uh, Br Brother Jason, took him out to lunch this afternoon. And, uh, and, and he told me that when, uh, when I announced Brother Marvin's birthday and I said, you're going to have to come up the steps. And as he was coming up the steps, he said, I could not believe. He, you said he was 82 years old. He said, I couldn't believe he's 82 moving like that. Uh, and, and, and then for the issue that developed, you know, it's like, what? You never, ever know. There are times, and we've seen it uh, in times past, we've seen where a basketball player seeming in great health just keels over on a basketball court. You never, ever know. That's why as we age, we get a little more, uh, a little more sensible in the way we think. Because as we get older and the pains and the, and the, the situations of life hit us, uh, some realization that we're not going to be here forever. I started when I was, my kids were really young. My wife still doesn't like when I say this. But I, I've often said, uh, especially that Sam as he aged and then Jeannie and then Nettie. But I said frequently, I'm not going to be around here forever. You guys got to start doing some of this stuff on your own. Uh, and my kids have heard that a lot. My wife said, I wish you just quit saying that because she doesn't want to think that way. But I think that way because uh, I know that my time on this earth in, in, is really brief. And, and I don't, I, I want to give as much as I can give to help the next generation, whether it be Sam and Lydia's generation or, or Miles and Liam's generation, whatever God leaves me here, I want to be able to leave them uh, things, how to, uh, uh, what to do in life, uh, testimony, if you will. Much like even when I was, I was pleased this morning, uh, one aspect about Brother Marvin going out, I was able to give testimony. This guy's lived a life for the Lord, and, 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 and if God takes him, then God takes him. He's lived his life, and he's thankful for the life, and if God takes him in the church house, no better way to end, to put an exclamation point on a life lived for Christ than be taken uh, right there as close to God as we can get on earth here in the church house with God's family all nestled around each other. Uh, the truth of the matter is that we put these stipulations on time God doesn't have and God doesn't experience. But as we realize and think about time, let's also view it as, okay, what am I going to do with the time I'm given? Uh, I watched a movie. I don't remember the name of the movie. Or I probably, I might watch it again. I usually, I'm really bad about watching movies about once. I might get a, a, a movie and watch it twice, and I'm pretty much done with it. Uh, the movie doesn't change. If, if the ending would change, I might watch it again. Uh, but once I know the ending, I'm good with it. Uh, and, and, and that's why I like sports. You don't know how it's going to end. So everyone's different. Uh, and so there's a little variety there. Uh, but I watched a movie, and, and I can't remember the movie, can't remember the name. And some of you movie buffs, you might think of it. And it, I, it may not have been a big movie. I don't know. I don't remember where I saw it. I'm sure as a kid when I was at home, and my sisters watched some weird stuff. <laughs> they, they made me watch uh, Gone with the Wind, the whole thing. 17 hours of a movie I had to watch with my my with my it's not that long feels like it and uh, it goes on and on and uh, I, I uh, the second time my sister watched it, I was too smart to sit there I got up and went and played ball and did all kinds of fun and I come in it's still on yeah it's still on oh wow and uh, uh, so long movie I'm, I just my brain won't stay there that long it uh, it likes to wander off I'm not 
saying anything critical about the movie, so don't get mad at me, uh, those of you that love that movie. But uh, the, the, the reality is it's sitting straight, uh, for a long time. Uh, I, but this movie, I remember as a kid, was about a young uh, kid uh, that, uh, that probably 10, 11, 12 years old. I probably was that age, maybe a little older, but not much. And he had cancer, some form of cancer. I believe that's what it was. He had some form of cancer, probably leukemia or something. And he was alive, and he had a friend in this movie. And in this movie, they get talking, and while they're talking, because one friend's inquisitive about the other friend, who's, uh, if you will, living on a time crunch because they have this uh, dreaded disease. And, and the concern the one friend was, well, well, how do you live, you know, how do you do this? And the friend that was sick said he heard from his grandpa that had passed some years back that uh, you're allowed a certain number of steps in life. And when those steps are completed, then your life is over. And it's up to you how many steps and what you do with those steps you take. So at the end of the movie, of course, uh, as all those movies tend to go, the one that you fall in love with that's sick passes away. And the other one has to deal with the loss and uh, has to deal with the process. And, and I remember at the end of that movie, uh, that kid is jumping as big a steps as he can take because he wants to get as far as he can with each step. I think that's kind of how we need to look at life and the time that God gives us here. Uh, let us value those moments we have here. They might be short little moments. They might be long moments. Might be just passing as Brother Marvin witnessed to the nurse as, uh, or, or the EMT as they're going into the, uh, the hospital. It might be just a fleeting little moment that we have with somebody. Let's make them valuable moments. Uh, let's not waste those moments. Boy, I wished as, as a kid that would have dawned on me a little more than it does at this point in my life. Man, the reality of the brevity of life, the reality of I'm not going to always be here. The reality, and we try to convey that to our kids. You got to, you got to do some of this stuff. Uh, we were talking to the, the girls after they got home, and, and uh, they have some adulting issues to take care of this week while they're home. And, uh, and one of those things, uh, they, <laughs> Laura said, you guys have an appointment over here. Laura, she, they'd asked Laura to schedule her, uh, um, an appointment. And, uh, and uh, the girl said, okay, mom, uh, what time do we need to leave? And mom said, I, I don't need to leave. I got other priorities. You got to go do this. And both of them is like a duet. What? No, you're supposed to go. I thought you said we had an appointment. And she said, Laura said, I did. I said, y'all have an appointment. And uh, uh, so it, it's, it's it, it, the kids were like, I don't want to take this on. But in reality, we have to grow up. In reality, it's just a fact of life. It's going to happen. There are things we have to do. And so uh, I believe as a parent, and, and I may have viewed it wrong, probably did, and probably warped my kids' mind. They'll be on those couches they put them on with those funny people talking to them. Uh, at some point, maybe wrapped up one of those funny jackets. I don't know at some point. Uh, but I tried real hard to get my kids to grow up as quick as possible. Not to be grown up necessarily, but I wanted them to be able to handle life if I weren't here. And, and I tried to convey to my kids, and like I said, probably too much. Uh, did some, I tried to wax eloquent from time to time. But the truth is that time is something that we, we need to understand a little bit. We need to grab hold of. If you're young here tonight, a message like this should be like wake up call. Let's think. If you're getting up in years like I'm getting up in years, some of us need to say, wait a minute, you know, this is, you know, I'm 50 plus now. I got to start thinking. Uh, if you're over, older than me uh, and, and still relatively young, I might add, uh, don't, take a, don't take advantage. Don't waste the time that you have here. Use it for God. Use it to make a difference with somebody. Use it to pass on something good and useful to uh, somebody. I, I just wrote down a couple thoughts here, uh, and, and we'll read through this passage again real quick. And I put, first of all, it's a seasonal thing. What's that mean? That time is seasons. Uh, there's, there's segments of time. I, I've said this before, that, uh, that, that oftentimes we get looking and, and ahead too far, and we don't enjoy today. 
Uh, when, when we're a, a little kid, what do we always want? We want to be one year older than we are, don't we? At least half a year, because we have half a year. You know how you count half a year till you're about 12, 13 years old, and, and sometimes even when you're older, uh, you got half years. Now, when you get my age, you don't talk about half years. You'd rather not talk about the years. Uh, you hope somebody will forget your birthday if they forget. I wished I was born on leap year. Uh, then my uh, years of life could be divided by four and I could be real young. Uh, it's just, it, it, it's, it's how it goes as we age in the process. I want to encourage you, if you're young, enjoy being young. Uh, don't, don't waste those times. Uh, of young. Be young. Learn something. Take advantage of it. Don't try to be grown up. That's what we're seeing in our society today. Is we're seeing a generation of young people trying to behave as old people and dealing with old people stuff when they should be dealing with young people stuff. Uh, kids, when they're playing games, they should be playing games. But our society is teaching about sexual issues. Why? They're not supposed to deal with those until that point of life comes. Let them enjoy their childhood. But I heard a, 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 a whole layout when, uh, and, and I want to get political, but certainly we, we've heard discussion uh, where, where they're discussing, <laughs> they're discussing a sexual assignment to kids beginning when they're three years old at certain places in the United States of America. They're, in other words, they're asking kids, do you want to be a boy or do you want to be a girl? And, and my friends, uh, it's not up to that child. God designed us the way he designed us. He does not create junk. He made us the way that he made us. And we're to be happy in the way that he made us. What has happened in our society, everyone wants somebody else or something else. Boys want to be girls. Girls want to be boys. Uh, rich people want to be poor. and Poor people want to be rich. Uh, it, it just, it's all messed up society. Uh, white people want to be black and black people want to be white. I don't understand that. Uh, it, it's, it's mind boggling. I talked to uh, some, some white people and they use all the black jargon. And I'm wondering why would we do that? Uh, why not be what God made you to be? Uh, I've talked to, to Mexican people that try to have an English accent. Don't try to have an English accent. Have the accent you have. Uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, it, just be what God made you to be. Uh, don't be altering and trying to change yourself. It'd be something you're not saying. Reject. There's a seasonal thing. Time has seasons. Uh, just like we're in the process of crossing over uh, from winter time into uh, springtime. Boy, I love this time of year as uh, uh, everything starts to bloom. And before long, the, the, the yucky gray trees are going to pop out green, pretty leaves. And, and it's going to be beautiful. And, 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 but it's a seasonal thing. Uh, enjoy the period. Now, I still struggle enjoying winter. I probably always will. Um, pray for me. I have that. What is that? Sad? Yeah, I have seasonal affective disease or disorder, and I've got a good, so I'm entering my happy season. Uh, as spring goes, uh, goes away and summer enters happy season uh, until late fall, and, uh, and once, once the leaves start to turn color, I start heading down the bad track. And uh, you all got to pray for me because I know the cold's coming. And uh, so, uh, but, but truly, we need to try to enjoy. If you're young, enjoy being young. If you're old, enjoy being old. Don't try to be young when you're doing it. that the funniest thing when a lady, uh, and oftentimes I, I blame the ladies, but a lot of us men do it. We try to turn back the clock. We go back and we go buy a, 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 an outfit. Girls will try to cram themselves in a little teeny bopper outfit. Let the teeny boppers have their teeny bopper outfit. And those of us that are old, let's be old people. Uh, and, and, and let's just live with what God and where God has per, uh, put us. Second uh, thing, uh, it's a physical thing. Look at verse 3. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up. Seems to be dealing with physical things. Physically... When we're in our teens and 20s, man, we are physical specimens. I know I was. I was good looking, hot to trot. I mean, I had hair on my head uh, and, uh, and everything was good. And uh, I got old and look what happened to me. Uh, the hot to trot left. 
I, 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 I used to, <laughs> my chest used to be up here. Now my belt's holding my chest. I don't know why, but that's how it's going. Uh, I, I used to have hair up here. Now it's down here uh, and, and coming out my nose and my ears. What's up with that? And uh, these are questions I'm going to ask God. Why, why is this? Why is there hair growing out of my ears straight that way? What is it doing here? And uh, uh, these are the, the issues of life. And it, it, but, but, but listen, let's, we, when we're young, let's be young and enjoy being young. But when we're old, let's be old. And there's times we need to stop. Brother Marvin and I have gone through the, the phase. He was in his 70s. Uh, and, and I was in, in uh, uh, my late 40s heading into 50s. And I had had all these surgeries on my leg. And I was shutting down. And I remember he was, he was hurting himself. Uh, he would go out and work with me out in the backyard, and he was physically hurting himself because his old body was saying, stop it, Marvin, stop it, calm down, let's just enjoy life, and let's not keep pushing ourselves so hard. And we went through some bumps along the way, didn't we, Brother Marvin, learning that we're going to have to shut down a little bit early. We're going to have to, we're going to have to really be tired. I remember uh, this is a long time ago, but I was working cutting a tree uh, years ago, I probably early 40s. And, and uh, Brother Marvin and I were, were out there working in the tree. And he's cutting away. I mean, the guy could do the machine. Uh, and, and I'm over there with the chainsaw. And I remember I got hot. And I wasn't drinking like I should. And I just got run down. And for a few moments, the world went a little bit spacey on me. And I remember I walked over to Brother Marvin. And I said, I don't know about you, but we're going to have to slow down for just a little bit. Let's go get a soda or something. He says, why? I'm fine. I said, no, you might be fine. I'm not fine. Let's shut it down for the day. And, uh, and, and we had, listen, there's a point where we've got to realize there's some physical involvement here. When we get older, let's pretend we're older. Uh, there, I used to get up and I used to sleep very little. Uh, and, and when I went through college, I don't know if I slept very much at all. And, uh, and, and now, man, if I, if I don't get a good night, a good night's sleep. I, I'm not a real easy person to deal with the next day. Things have changed. It's a physical thing. Not only is it a physical thing, uh, but look, it's an emotional thing in verse number four. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. Uh, the, the truth of the matter is, let's enjoy the aspects of life. All of them. Did you know that what makes the bright, sunshiny day so wonderful is the yucky, dreary day that we just went through? Uh, a lot of times it takes that extreme for us to realize. It takes, it takes the difficulties. In Did you know what? And, and, and maybe I'm just weird. But when a problem comes our way in our lives and our family lives, I think of it as, well, it's going to seem really good when that problem's solved. And God's in charge, and I think he's going to solve the problem. So however he solves it, uh, we're going to enjoy it back when it when it. Ha the truth of the matter is we don't have to be depressed. We don't have to get all upset and uptight about everything. Not that I don't, but we I shouldn't. Uh, and, and I need to work at that. And we need to understand that 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 we allow time to control our emotions. There's time when we need to cry. Let me say this. Uh, I, I, I struggle Personally, I'm an internal type of guy when it comes to life's problems. Uh, I will internalize life's problems. You probably will never know that I'm struggling internally. About the only one that knows it is my wife. My kids catch on quicker than others. But most of the time, I will internalize and things will stack up. And the other day, Laura grabbed hold of me and she hugged me real tight. And she said, it's going to be okay. Now, I didn't say anything to her. She just could tell that I was struggling. There's a lot on me. And I was dealing with a lot of things that nobody will probably ever know. And she just hugged me real tight and said, it's going to be okay. It's an emotional thing. And those of us that are like that, men, we tend to be that way. That we'll just, I can take care of this. I'm not going to say nothing. And, and, and the truth is that we need to realize that we are human. And we do get down. And it's okay for us to struggle. And it's okay for us to reach out to somebody and say, help me through this. I'm struggling here. And the truth of the matter is that oftentimes we men cause ourselves our own problem because we just try to bottle up our emotions. We ain't made that way. And God made us to share and to open up. And, and I love it. And we have our prayer meetings and the men prayer meetings. Sometimes we just talk. Sometimes we talk about stuff. And you girls better be glad you ain't there. Because sometimes we talk about stuff that's just boy stuff. And we're and sometimes it's just shooting a breeze stuff. Yeah, we do that. But sometimes it's about serious stuff. And, and the truth of the matter is we need that 
opportunity because we may never dump anywhere else. Find a place where you can let people into your dark world and see if they can be a help to you. And the truth is that we need to understand it is an emotional thing. I, I said this, number four, it can be lost. Uh, look what it says there in verse six, a time to get, a time to lose, time to keep and a time to cast away. You can lose time. And too often, I think uh, uh, all of us can go back in time and say, man, I lost that time. I lost that time. Boy, I wish I'd have thought differently and behaved differently at this time. We've only got this certain segment of time. They say uh, in, 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 in very well, I think, that uh, we see these, uh, these gravestones and we see a year here and a year there. A year when I was born and a year when I died. But what really counts is that dash that's in the middle. What do we do with that dash that's in the middle? It can be lost. Don't waste the time God's given you. Enjoy life. Give help. Do what you can while you're here. Don't be one of these that looks back on your life and say, man, I wished I'd a, I wished I'd a illustration. I remember years ago we had a family that came here to the church. And, uh, and the, the wife of, of the family came to me and she said, Brother Dusty, my daddy's sick. And she said, she said in the hospital, I said, well, can I, can I go visit him? She said, oh, he didn't like preachers. And I said, well, I, I'll go visit him. And she said, no, you don't understand. He really don't like preachers. He calls them things that nobody should call somebody else. And I said, well, that's okay. And she said, well, I, I don't want you to go and get called funny things. I said, I worked in a machine shop. Uh, I was the youngest guy in a machine shop, and I was called things that nobody ought to, be, ought to ever be called. And I dealt with it. It's just part of life. I can deal with it. And she said, uh, she said, uh, okay, she gave me his room number. I went into the, the room, the hospital room. His wife greeted me. She was sitting on the other side of the bed. He was laying there. She recognized me. She greeted me. Kind, nice lady. And the, her husband, I said hi to him, and he grunted Ugh, like that at me. I walked in the room. As I walked in the room, I glanced up to the TV, and wouldn't you know, they had Clint Eastwood in Hang 'em High. I got into the room. He grunted at me. I knew he didn't like preachers. He knew I was a preacher. But before he could say anything, I glanced up the TV. I said, is that Clint Eastwood? He said, yeah. And I said, that's Hang 'em High, isn't it? He goes, yeah. I said, that's what greatest movies ever made he goes yeah and I sat there he didn't say nothing else the rest of that time he said nothing else to me I talked to his wife but over the years uh, I had interactions with him and he would talk to me a little more we'd always talk about movies John Wayne of course he liked John Wayne too and we talked about movies I remember that his health really took a, 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 a nosedive and his daughter came to me in tears and she said, I really think daddy's going to die and we don't know if he's saved. Can you go ask him? I said, I said, I will if you want me to. And she said, I think he'll talk to you. But she said, he may not. And he may say things you won't like to hear. And I said, I'm okay with that. They let me in the ICU ward here down at uh, MTMC back in the day and, uh, and let me in to see him. I was the only one in the room. He was in the room. His, his body, bodily fluids were leaking out of his body so much they had wrapped his, uh, this tape skin over his uh, skin to try to keep it all in. He was just, he was dying. And, and he sat there and I went in and I talked to him. He was, he was pretty verbal, surprisingly so. Uh, and, and I watched him. I knew he was in his head, but he wasn't in his head. You know what I'm saying? He was struggling. And, uh, and, and he reached down at one point and he pulled on this. The, I mean, it was taped stuck to his skin. He pulled it off and ripped his arm uh, and, and just hurt me. I said, man, you got to quit doing that. I'm going to have to leave because I can't handle that. And, uh, and he said, but it bothers me. I said, leave it there. It's helping you. I promise. Uh, and, and I said, listen, I got to ask you a question. And he, he looked at me and he, he was he trying to ignore me, but we had the, the hang him high connection. I think we're okay. And he looked at me and I said, listen, I got to ask you a question. I said, if you die today, do you know for sure you're going to heaven? And he looked at me and the cloud that had seemed to, to, to cover his eyes went away. And he looked right at me clear as, as day. And he said, well, yeah, I know that. And I said, really? Because what his daughters told me is he had nothing good to say about the church or preachers. He had nothing good to say about God. They had no idea whether or not he was, had even gone to church. In her mind, he had been in church only to see her graduate. Uh, he hadn't even gone to church to see family members buried. He would not go to church. He said, well, yeah, I'm saved. I said, you are? <laughs> I'm sure the look on my face puzzled him. 
But he said, yeah. And he went back in time, in time. You could see his mind go back in time to a time where he would go on a regular basis to church. And he went to church on a regular basis. And he said when he was 17 or 18, he said, I was 17 or 18. I think I was 18. He said, I used to work on cars a lot. He said, but I went to church and, and, and I heard a message. And he said, God got hold of my heart. He said, I went forward. I bowed a knee. Someone took a Bible, showed me how I could be saved. And I accepted Christ as Savior then. And I said, really? <laughs> and he said, yeah. He said, I did. I said, can I ask you a question? And he said, yeah. I said, why do your daughters and family not know that you're saved? He said, I never told them. I said, why? He said, well, you see, I messed up. He said, I quit going to church and started drinking. And he said, I found more fun in drinking and working on the cars than I did church. And he said, I got a little burnt out at church. And he said, I just... Got ugly to church. And he said, I really messed up, didn't I? And I said, well, I said, I'm not going to judge that. I'm not here for that. I said, but what I would encourage you to do, I said, would you tell your babies that you accepted Jesus as Savior as a kid? Because I've had to have them shed tears on my shoulder, weeping for their daddy that they're concerned about his eternal being. And you've got that cared for. The truth of the matter is, let's not allow it to go. Uh, let's not waste the time. Let's not lose the time. Then, fifthly, I put down, it can be wonderful. Uh, verse number eight, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? And, uh, and, and uh, time can be such a wonderful thing. And the question is, how can it be a wonderful thing? Uh, verse number 11, I think, answers that. And that's going to be my sixth point and the end. The beauty is if we leave it in God's hand. Look what he says there in verse number 11. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Do you understand? Outside of wedlock. And then wondering its whole life whether or not it was really accepted. Whether or not, why didn't daddy love me? Uh, why, why am I only got mom? Uh, did, did, did mom not love me? Why do I only have dad? And in some cases... My parents didn't love me at all. They just put me up for adoption. Those questions can be limited if we would do things in his time. Money. I need money. I need money. I need money. And people get so uptight about money. And they go off and they do something stupid trying to get money. They uh, sneak around taxes. They go down to the store and, and hold up the store. They go steal something. Get themselves in trouble. Many of the people in the jails today are there because they did okay thing. At the wrong time. And it became a wrong thing. The reality is that the beauty of time is when we leave it up to God. When we let God take care of it, it's God's time. Today, I'll be honest with you. As I looked down and saw Brother Marvin in the condition he was, I wondered, maybe it's time. Maybe it's over. Reality is, there he sits. Wasn't God's time. And maybe an EMT need to hear a gospel testimony. And maybe a whole, we had a whole crew coming. That's the most people that come forward down the aisle in the service. I almost had the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost revival. As I even told them they was coming outside. I said, wow, we got people <laughs> coming down the aisle here at church on Sunday morning. What a blessing. The truth is, no telling them what kind of impact this church made on them. And how we loved one of our own as they struggled. The truth of the matter is, we only have this segmented period of time to live. Let's make it count. Let's make it valuable. Well, let's make it valuable to God. Let's make it valuable to our family. Uh, I often think, and I kind of you know, bummed a little bit, Nettie has decided that she, it's her personal, personal, her personal job to get as many goofy pictures of her dad because she's heard me in my illustrations saying, when I die, I want us to have fun. And, uh, and there's going to be pictures. There's not going to be all these morbid pictures of me going on the screen up there. It's going to be fun pictures. Nettie's taking fun pictures. And now with these cameras, you can take what they call a live picture. And you can put your finger on that picture and it moves. So when you smile, they smile for the camera. It smiles. But if you punch it early enough, you can get the smile. And if you, if you punch it and hold it, you can get the smile and what's coming after it. 
So you get the fake smile, and then you get the... And Nettie's gotten all kinds of these pictures of me going... <laughs> and I just got a whole, a whole bunch of pictures of me in these funny poses. But there's a beauty to that. Because God wants us to enjoy the time he's given us. Let's enjoy it. So when we are gone, there's some good thoughts we can have. God can use us in a way we never thought possible. Let's take advantage of this thing of time. We only got a little bit of it. Let's make it count. Our Heavenly Father, just a few thoughts on time. Lord, I thank you for the time that you've given us. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to realize that we should value, but the, value the time that you've given us. And that's where it comes from you. You could have taken Marvin this morning, Lord. It was an easy job for you. Nothing to you. But you left him here. We're certainly thankful for that. But Lord, I pray that all of us would pause and realize that we only have a little bit. And may we use it to bring honor and glory to you. Lord, I pray that you bless our people. So, so many of them are hurting and struggling with health issues. Lord, I pray that you'd be with them as they struggle. Lord, I pray that you'd just help our church and help our church family. Help those that are struggling. Lord, please meet each and every need. Bless us as we go about our way and bring us back to your house again. On Wednesday, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all very much. You are dismissed.